Hi folks. This is a little uh, sluice that I've been thinking about making for quite some time. I have had an interest in trying to recover the very, very fine gold that most of your sluices kick out. And so I thought I'd see if uh, it would be possible to make a little mini sluice to recover that gold. And so this is kind of what I've come up with. <clears throat> it is 6 inches wide by 18 inches long. So it's uh, small and portable and uh, I can run it out of this little 10 gallon tote here quite easily. And uh, I found that it works very well. This is the basic sluice. It's just uh, a simple one. It's got a half inch plywood bottom on it. The two sides I have made out of uh, 5 8 inch cedar, uh, just cedar fencing actually, and the back plate is uh, made out of pine that holds the water bar on there. So the whole thing is very, very simple. The key to the whole success is in the mat. Well, there are two different types of mats actually that are very similar. They're called rough top uh, conveyor belt mat. One is uh, called the Vortex Mat, which is used on the Gold Cube. The other one is the Martin Gold Stop Mat. Now this one that I'm using right here is the Martin Gold Stop Mat. And it uh, is available from the Martin Prospecting Company. And uh, it can be bought online from his company or on eBay either one. Both of them actually can be bought on eBay if you want. But as you can see, they are composed of thousands of very little tiny pockets there. And that is the key to this mat working because the gold drops down into those little tiny pockets there and is trapped there by the, the black sand that comes in and covers them over. So it's a very interesting mat. There's also a deep V ribbed mat that you can buy, which is uh, kind of similar but different again. It's just uh, deep V ribs on it. I'm going to see if I can try all three of them here eventually. So, to fit the mat in, Just goes in like that, and you're set and ready to go. I also got thinking how to uh, process the cons once you got them off the mat. So, what I have come up with was a little insert made out of plywood that I could uh, plug in there to make a uh, chalkboard miller table out of it. And it worked a lot better than uh, I had hoped for. So uh, if you're out on the road camping or something like that, you want to run some material, you can run it through the mat and then run the cons through the little miller table insert there to uh, separate your final gold. To power it, I have a little inexpensive 500 gallon per hour pump that I have uh, hooked up for this and uh, it seems to work just about right for the size of sluice it is there. Uh, I can cut back to maybe about 400 gallons per hour and get just about the optimum uh, flow out of it. Also, I have a uh, little catch bucket there which uh, I use for catching the tailings in and that lets you uh, rerun the tailings if you want to. Although I have done this several times on uh, this sluice and never run into any extra gold so it seems to act like a just a real gold magnet and uh, filters just about all the uh, material. Leaves just the gold and the black sands.
also I have this little support on there so that you can adjust the uh, the elevation left and right on it I put this little valve on there uh, right on at the pump uh, to adjust the water flow if I need to reduce it back any <clears throat> It's better to put it on the pump itself than onto the sluice because uh, any disruptions that the, the valve makes, if you put it down here on the pump, any disruptions will uh, kind of even themselves out as it goes on up the, the tube there and into the sluice. I mounted a little board on the bottom here with a quarter inch by 20 thread. Uh, a bolt through there and that's what I use for doing the elevation this is about three inches high and if I uh, adjust that little dial there or little button there down to about that point that'll give me about a 15 degree angle which is about ideal for this uh, gold stopper mat to supply the battery power I have a little uh, car jump starter battery that I use for it that seems to work quite well. It'll power the little 500 uh, gallon per hour pump for, I don't know, about three hours, four hours, something like that. So it works quite well. If I have a lot of cons to run, then I can put my large miller table on this and run it out of it as well. I also have three other uh, fluid bed sluices that I use, and I can also run out of this. So I've kind of made a kind of a combination of different uh, units that I can run out of this little 10 gallon tote. And I can swap them out back and forth, use the same pump and the same power supply. So it's all very handy for me. For you, those of you who are interested in the bucket sluice, you can use the same bucket setup for uh, this mini sluice here as you do for the uh, California bucket sluice. They both work very, very well, and I love my little bucket sluice and uh, this one adapts over to the bucket quite easily. One of the other features about this is the fact that you can uh, get a little longer hose on your pump and drop it into the stream and uh, pump right out of the stream into this and this uh, bucket will catch all your cons in case you want to take them back home with you. Well, let's fire up and uh, run a couple of batches through, shall we? See just how it works here. I've got about a quart of material here that uh, I've used for quite some time now for testing my fluid bed sluices. So I doubt if there's much gold in here, but uh, we'll just run her on through here some of this. This has had about 25 runnings from a bazooka type fluid bed sluice so I don't expect much uh, to show up here here you can kind of uh, see how the uh, interchange is going between the different sands and stuff and this is what you're supposed to be able to see is uh, kind of dancing in the street so if your little sand is dancing in there that's the way it should be
Well, it looks like we got a little bit of a surprise out of that batch of stuff. The black uh, discs there that you can see are what I call my black gold. It's number nine lead birdshot that's been smashed slightly with uh, a pair of pliers on there. It is about the same uh, weight as a plus 20 piece of gold. Actually, that piece of gold and the lead weight are uh, just about the same weight. So it gives me a chance to test my equipment out without losing gold if there's a problem. Well, let's run another little batch here, see how this works out. As you can see, the light material just moves off quite rapidly and the heavies all drop down into the mat. The little pockets down there will catch the heavier material like the gold and the black sands. As you can see, with the little dancing, then the material is interchanging the way it should be. And you'll get this if your water flow and your angle are set properly. Well, let's shut down the water and see what it looks like here. Well, looks like we have another little surprise there for us. But anyway, you can kind of get an idea of what it's like. Uh, as you can see here, the black sand just builds up and fills in the little pockets. If the interchange of materials is going on properly, the gold will so will drop down through the uh, black sand there and get lodged in the bottom of these little pockets in here. Well, doing a cleanup on this is quite easy. You just uh, pull the mat out and turn it around in kind of a circle with uh, the little fingers facing out and drop it in a little pail of water there and bounce it up and down a couple of times. One of the things I like about this type of mat is that it uh, cleans out very quickly and very easily here so uh, and it doesn't leave very much material. So, it's some great mat for that. As you can see here, uh, most of the material that's left out of the mat is just uh, the black sand. All of the lights have been cleaned out, which is the way it should be. Hmm. Looks like we got a little too much water in there. <laughs> okay, well, you can see how much is left out of that mat. It's probably about two ounces or less. Well, to run the cons out of the mat, we can uh, put the little Miller table insert in there and uh, give it a try and uh, see how it works.
Well, we'll have to drop the elevation back down to where the uh, table's almost level now. The Miller table, uh, you start out with it at almost flat, maybe one or two degrees, and then uh, change the elevation on the water level as you need to separate the fine gold. Well, we won't uh, run you through the whole process here because it's kind of a long time consuming, but you can see how much just very, very tiny gold that this little sluice can pull out. It's just almost <laughs> too small to see on here. Anyway, these next pictures are what we pulled out of two tablespoons worth of the material at a time. We had to suck it up in between these batches here so that we didn't lose it on down the table. So these are all uh, part of the same batch, but just two tablespoons worth at a time. So you can see how much uh, material gets lost out of uh, these sluices here. And uh, you can recover it again with one of these little sluices. Well, I hope this was uh, of some interest to some of you folks here. Anyway, thank you very much for stopping by and watching. I appreciate it. Bye now.